It was off a few miles off the head of us. And so we were driving along the thick, following his tracks and his anticipators. Ed was ahead of me, and I was right behind him. I stopped, not realizing that the tail was only 70 feet away in the hole, in the other hole. We had seen this bear going up over the hill, and we went up over the hill, and when we were on top of the hill, and we'd seen it going up the valley, so then we got down, we were tracking it. And then all of a sudden it was hiding in the willows. And out, out it come. Well, I started to drive away, and next thing I looked back, and the bear's on top of him. So I just stopped and grabbed my gun out of my scabbard and started walking at the bear and shooting. I remember everything because I never lost consciousness. I had to open my airway because I had a bunch of mush here and everything was all torn up. Lost my teeth, my tongue, my jaw. And so I just Stayed focused, you know, thought about, I knew that I could hear, so I could talk to Dan and Ed that were listening. My son, he was just out, outboard of me, and then he's seen what was going on, so he come back around, and he's over on this side, and by that time the bear had spun around and he was charging me. He was coming right across Wesley, charging me, and Edward opened up. so. <laughs> you know, I probably saved Wes's life, and my son saved my life on the same ordeal. As soon as he started hitting it, and hell, you're bound to hit it, you're only from here to the red building away, you know, so he, uh, he started hitting it, and the bear right away, instead of keeping on coming, started, turned and went about as far as that telephone pole, maybe just a little bit further, and uh, spun around like he was going to charge again because he had done that twice already. <laughs> but he was getting pretty weak, but he laid there. And so I went over and rolled Wesley up and his whole face rolled right off. It was wide open, he was wide open, but what I thought was amazing, very little blood. And Wesley's conscious. And so I, I pushed him back down, face into the snow. And I said, Wesley, you gotta just stay real still. Keep your face in the snow, keep your face in the snow. I was able to use the snow to help numb the, what was left. Uh, also, though I was getting wet from the snow, it's like a bit cold. I stayed to the new valley in high school, came up a little bit. And uh, of course, I, had, I wasn't moving for an hour, so that kind of. I went for the ham radio and went calling, and it was really uh, amazing. I just keyed it up and said this kill zero HJ calling for any station and guess who instantly come right on his brother was just coming out of his house in town and heard me and he was just jumping in his truck and I said yeah I got you Dan what's going on so I told him got a bear mauling Wesley's all tore up we need a helicopter here, so I told him exactly where we were, and I knew exactly where we were, I knew how the helicopter could come, and then they came, uh, probably were there within maybe an hour. And I knew they had called for help for my brother, who died a helicopter, and I said, here's the helicopter, you know, coming and stuff. Uh, <coughs> I was lucky enough that I was able to get up with their help and walk into the helicopter, I was fortunate enough to have a, a great physical team. Any time anybody saw that I appear in Alaska or elsewhere that I know of, I reached out to the family. The families that are involved in this, they don't really know what to expect down the road. The only guy in Montana was out hunting with his dad was all by a bear. 
about four or five days later, his cousin and Paul Lau sent me a letter in the mail that said, hey, we need your help. Will you help us? The family is lost. The cousin is in the hospital in Seattle, the same hospital as you in. So immediately I called her. What time do I I'll fly out on the airplane? What time do they help? I would not have known about that man unless and I wouldn't have met the family and the friends I have from it. But what I was able to do is to just let them know that it takes stages. If he's alive now, he's a nature. And so just to reassure that eventually he'll have somewhat of a normal life. In the last three months, I was able to swallow a full-size vitamin that I couldn't swallow five months ago. I choked on it. People that don't see me but know me, year after year, they say, wow, you're talking better, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. But you can see, you know, it has a few, uh, two sides on it. It's still a fat to do. There's people that have it a lot worse than I do still to this day, but the whole thing is, is that, you know, you just don't know what the outcome is going to be if you just continue to try to do better and be better. You know, I, I was lucky that I was able to learn how to talk again. I had my upper body was damaged and some stuff in my mouth was damaged, but I was still able to, to do all that. <laughs>